Hello everyone and welcome to IT Knowledge Base. Back again with another security related stuff, but a very informative and exciting video. Not new, but worthy to checking out. In my previous video, I have pointedly covered how to install and secure OpenSSH service in Linux boxes. In the same server, I am going to enhance server security after installing and configuring fail to bed. Whether you are hosting your websites or managing Linux on cloud servers for remote administration and its security, it's essential you cannot live without even thinking of that. Introduction to fail to bend. Fail to bend an intrusion prevention framework written in Python. It is designed to prevent almost all Linux services from brute force attack. Also prevent brute force SSH logins and passwords in the same way that hackers do. Along with how to permanently fix those gaps or security countermeasures without thwarting and losing any configuration. We can set up fail to bend to provide brute force protection for SSH on our server. This will ensure that the server is secure from brute force attacks and it also allows us to monitor the strength of the brute force attacks in regards to the number of authentication attempts that are being made. Fail to bend is not limited to only SSH but also provides protection for different services such as FTP, SSH, Apache, Webmin, Docker, WordPress and essentially any services which writes information to log files against brute force login attacks. Later in this video lecture, I am divulging how easy it is to install and configure fail to bend to enhance your Linux security services and prevent your servers from all sort of internal and external attacks. This is slightly portrayed as a typical real scenario. All the business sectors almost design the same network, whether they are hosting websites and domains, managing their dedicated or VPS servers, or whatever they think best to secure the businesses, they use it. But what the fail to ban package is, you can either install it on an individual Linux boxes or place a border edge fail to ban server to act as a log monitoring and its needed configuration accordingly. But if you have acquired any of these services, you can use them and it's recommended. Now let's pay a closer look at our lab network scenario for a successful demonstration. On the right hand side, I have my LAN or internal network, a border edge PFSense firewall to filter all incoming and outgoing traffic, a managed switch with VLANs, and positively some active services in our Linux servers, for example, OpenSSH, Apache Web Server, and fail to ban IPS is installed. In contrast, on our left hand side, I have identically pretended an external network with different subnets where attackers are sitting with prying eyes and desperately wanted to execute brute force attacks on a various services running, which may lead to badly disrupting some services. Hackers continuously sought to enter into the network, especially for SSH, to gain access into the Linux servers. To detoxify, we have installed the fail to ban IPS package separately and we will see in real time how attackers or hackers should ban by fail to ban. Installing and configuring fail to ban. Fail to ban is one of those tools that once I learned how valuable it is, I wondered how I ever lived so long without it. Fail to ban is able to keep an eye on your log files and look for authentication failures. You can set the number of failures that are allowed from any given IP addresses. And if there are more than the allowed number of failures, fail to ban will block that individual IP address. It's highly configurable and can enhance the security of your server. Installing and configuring fail to ban is relatively straightforward. First install its package. It's not that hard. After the solution, the fail to ban daemon will start up and be configured to automatically start at boot time. Configuring fail to ban is simply a matter of creating a configuration file. But this is one of the more interesting aspects of fail to ban. You should not use its default config file. The default file is jail.conf. The problem with this file is that it can be overwritten when you install security updates. If those security updates ever include fail to ban itself. To remedy this, fail to ban also reads the jail.local file if it exists. It will never replace that file and the presence of a jail.local file will supersede the jail.con file. The simplest way to get started is to make a copy of jail.con file and save it as a jail.local file. And after all the above configuration steps, execute these three commands to restart, auto enable and check the status of the fail to pen. And everything should be up and running as required. Perform a demo. Okay, now let's jump over to our Linux server and ensure to perform all the steps discussed in the slide step by step and set some compulsory measures on our Linux server. First, let's update the repository. I definitely. Now install fail to ban package.
After the installation, the field to band daemon will start up and be configured to automatically start at boot time. Go to jail to band configuration folder. You should not use its default config file. Here yield.conf is the default fail to ban config file. As stated earlier, the problem with this file is that it can be overwritten when you install security updates. If those security updates ever include fail to ban itself. The simplest way to get started is to make a copy of jail.conf and save it as jail.local. And after all the above configuration steps, execute these three commands in order to auto run after every reboot and for fail save. System CTL restart fail to bin. System CTL enable now fail to bin. System CTL status tag l fail to bend it shows it's active and running next i'll go over some of the very important settings you should configure so open up the jail.local file the first configuration item to change is locate on line number 292 ignore ip first of all uncomment then you should add additional network that you don't want to be blocked by fail to bend I certainly don't want to block my trusted LAN network, so I should add it though. Basically, this will help prevent you from getting locked out in a situation where you accidentally trigger fail to ban. Fail to ban is relentless. It will block any service that meets its block criteria and it won't think twice about it. This includes blocking you. To rectify this, adding your company's network here as well as any other IP address you never want to be blocked. Make sure you leave the localhost IP intact. In that example, I added my trusted LAN network as well as single IP address of another network. Add your network to this line to ensure you don't lock yourself out. Next, go to line number 101, includes the band time option. This option pertains how many seconds a host is banned when fail to ban blocks it. This option defaults 10 minutes. For the sake of the successful demonstration, I would change it to 2 minutes to show you how it's getting bans and unbans automatically. Change this number to whatever you find reasonable or just leave it as its default which will also be fine. If a host gets banned, it will be banned for this specific number of minutes and then it will eventually be allowed again. Continuing, we have the max drive settings or maximum retry settings. This is specifically the number of failures that need to occur before fail to ban takes action. If a service is watching reaches the number set here, then game over. The IP will be blocked for the number of minutes included in the ban time option. You can change this if you want to, if you don't find 5 failures to be reasonable. The highest I would set it to is 7. For those users on your network who insist they are typing the correct password and they type the same wrong thing over and over, hopefully they realize their error before their seventh attempt and won't need to call the help desk. Skipping ahead all the way down to line number 272 or thereabouts, we have the jail section. From here, the config file will list several jails you can configure. This is basically another word for something fail to win will pay attention to. The first is SSHD, which configures its protection of the OpenSSH daemon. Look for this option underneath SSHD, port equals SSH. Port being equal to SSH basically means that it's default to open to port 22. If you've changed your SSH port, change this to reflect whatever that port is. Save this file and exit it. Before we go too much further, I want to underscore the fact that we should test whether fail to ban is working after each configuration change we make. To do this, restart fail to ban and check the status. Just type this command to restart fail to ban. However, it is safe to make this service auto starts automatically after every reboot. Now check the status of the fail to ban. The status should always be active and running. If it's anything else such as failed, that means that fail to ban does not like something in your configuration. 
usually that means that fail to ban status will reflect that it exited so as we go make sure to restart fail to ban after each change and make sure it's not complaining about something the status command will show lines from fail to ban's log file for your convenience another useful command to run after restarting fail to ban is the following fail to ban tag client status the output from that command will show all the jails that you have enabled if you enable a new jail in the config file, you should see it listed within the output of that command. So how do you enable the jail? By default, all jails are disabled except for the one for SSH. Let's go back to the jail.local file again. If you want to enable the Apache authentication jail, find its section and place enabled equal to right underneath its stanza. For example, Apache tag auth will look like the following after you add the enable line. In that example, the enabled equals to portion was not present in the default file. I added it. Now that I have enabled a new jail, we should restart fail to ban. Save this file, exit it out. Now check its status to make sure it did not explode on startup. Yes, it is fine. Assuming all went well, run the fail to ban tag client space status command. We should see the new jail listed in the output of the following command. On my test server, the output became the following once I enabled Apache tag auth jail. Please keep remembering, if you enable a jail for a service you don't have installed, fail to ban may fail to start up. In my example, I actually did have Apache 2 installed on that server before I enabled its jail. If I had not installed Apache 2 and enabled jail for Apache 2, fail to ban would likely have exited, complaining that it was not able to find log files for Apache. This is the reason why I recommend that you test fail to ban after enabling any jail. If fail to ban decides it does not like something or something it's looking for is not present, it may stop. Then it won't be protecting you at all, which is not good. The basic order of operations for fail to ban is to peruse the jail config file. Looking for any jails you may benefit from if you have a daemon running on your server, there's a chance that there's a jail for that. If there is, enable it and see whether fail to ban breaks. If not, you are in good shape. If it does fail to restart properly, inspect the status output and check what it's complaining about. One thing you may want to do is add the enabled equals to line to SSHD. The SSHD jail is already enabled by default, but since it was not specifically called out in the config file, I don't trust it. So you might as well add an enable line to be safe. There are several jails you may benefit from if you are using SSL with Apache. Enable Apache Tag Mode Security. Also consider enabling Apache Tag Shell Shock. While you are at it to potentially protect Apache from the Shell Shock vulnerability. Save this file and exit it out. Fail to win does not discriminate. It will block anyone. Once you get it fully configured, I think you'll agree that fail to win is a worthy ally for your server. Okay, now we have successfully installed fail to ban and enabled jail for SSH and Apache 2. Our fail to ban configuration status is showing fine and the fail to ban service is active and running satisfactory. Now let's see fail to ban in action. If a hacker or any typical user tries to log in with the wrong password guessing or hacker starts brute force attack to SSH or Apache 2 logins, then how fail to ban throttle those failed login attempts and protect our server generously. We have configured ban time is 2 minutes and the maximum retry attempt is 5. After that, IP should be blocked. Now let's back to our machines, Kali Linux, which is simulated as an attacking machine and we will execute a brute force attack from Hydra to our business critical Linux machines. At the same time, we will monitor the fail to ban log file in the server for ban and unban IP addresses. Now I am switching over to my attacking machine and starting brute force attack. We can see that fail to ban banned the external IP address, which leads to failed login attempts. Next, we will see how to check ban IPs and unban the chosen one. How to unban an IP in fail to ban? In the context of fail to ban, a jail is a specific set of rules and action 
that fail to ban replies to incoming traffic to a particular service or network. The fail to ban utility is used to check and unban the banned IP addresses. To identify the specific IP address which is banned in the system, the fail to ban tag client command is used with the status option over the SSID. Here you can see the banned IP list is our external IP which is 192.168.11.104 and when an IP address from all jails you can use a fail to ban tag client command line tool run the following command to unban the IP address from all fail to ban jails. If you want to unban the IP address from a specific fail to ban jail, you can use the unban command by specifying the banned IP address. The output confirmed that 192.168.11.104 has been unbanned in the system. Okay, that's basically how fail to ban works. You set up a filter and when conditions are met, then the remote system is banned. You can ban it for longer period of time and you can set up multiple filters to protect your systems. Remember that fail to ban is a single solution and does not secure your system from other vulnerabilities. A layered multifaceted approach to security is the strategy you want to pursue. No single solution provides enough security. You can find example of other filters and some advanced fail to ban implementations is described at fail to bandorg Alright, that's all for the now. I am hoping you have found this video informative. Thank you for being here. I will see you in my upcoming future tag video content. I look forward to join you through this lecture. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Thank you.